sun is shining and we have got a new Dealey's Dilemmas for you. This time we're looking at how to set up a strong defensive unit and defensive system. We've got, it's a little bit different this time, we've got a few different experts going to chat about it. So we've Ross Bennett from Professional Soccer, Barry Milan from Hurling, Joe Coulter from Gaelic Football, London Gaelic Football, and of course the cherry on top. Stevie Poacher to talk about how to set up a defensive unit. Many is the time I was on the receiving end of Stevie's good defensive unit with Carlo. So some really interesting stuff. Have a look, have a listen in and the four lads will be touching on some thoughts around how to set up a good strong defensive system. Okay, enjoy. Hi folks, I'm going to talk a little bit about defensive structure and about setting up a defensive shape. Um, if we look at the two teams that are playing, we're actually going to look at the yellow team as being the defensive team here in this in this structure. So I suppose a couple of key points of, of good defensive play, principles of good defensive play, is closing the door, closing the space, uh, delay, balance, being compact, uh, having levels of concentration, cover, support, you know, composure, restraint, discipline in around the defensive area as well, but also transition and develop. But today we'll just look at the shape and the structure. So suppose one of the most popular ones is obviously the plus one, okay, where you pull it a, a forward out of the, the forward lane, okay, and play someone between the lanes. So for example, Brian Fox from Tipperary would play this role very effectively. You'll see Derry, Gareth McInnes this year has performed this role in, in, a, in a very, he's come from, from six though and dropped off and uh, played a very disciplined role between the two lanes, providing that cover, that space. So if a player is coming down one side, the plus one will come across and block off some kicking channels or some driving lanes, okay? Now, in this sort of system as well, what you probably tend to find is that 10 and 12 drop back as well. Okay, so you have a platform and you have a, you have a first uh, point of contact probably in around about the 65. And then whatever formation you want to play up front, whether that be a spine of three or whether that be a one and a two, that's irrelevant anyway because we're looking today at the defensive structure. Okay, so another popular um, uh, way of playing as well is obviously a middle third press, okay, where everyone drops off, okay into the middle third and what you have is you have a congestion of bodies in the middle third all right and you're putting pressure on the ball coming in which allows your defenders to get touch tight and to get very very aggressive and close to the man they're marking okay so that's a middle third press then obviously you have a full high press okay where you're responsible man to man okay everyone is pushed up everyone is touch tight okay there can be no <coughs> weaknesses in this system are that if you're pressing very very high and the opposition break a line, say four gets out, then obviously you can be left exposed at the back. But you need really, really good athletic defenders, defenders who can defend one on one, okay, and defenders who are very competent defending space and pace. Okay. And finally, probably the last one is what you would have is nearly a zonal structure, okay, where uh, opposition come very, very deep, okay. Uh your wing forwards drop, all right, your midfield drops, and what you do is you nearly defend narrow okay you defend narrow but you defend very zonally okay and in this type of system here okay what you're looking to do is you're looking at key matchups at the back okay so 13 might be McBrady, a danger man or a clifford out here okay those players are followed wherever they go okay but the rest of the players play in a very zonal based system where what you're looking to have and what you're looking to have visually is nearly like a staggered line Okay, so there's some ideas of an offensive system. Hi, Ross Bennett here, um, talking about how to set up a strong defensive structure. I'm going to speak a little bit uh, differently, come at a different angle. I'm not going to go into too much around specific tactics um, and what formations to play, etc., etc. But I'm going to talk about how certain things I think are essential to setting up a strong defensive structure. So number one is personnel. Um, you've got to assess what personnel you have in the squad to determine what type of structure you're going to play. So for example, if you've got good runners, um, good midfield runners, good forward line runners, and you can hit teams on the counter attack, then it makes sense maybe to play a little bit of a lower block to be able to hit teams on the counter attack and get points, soak up pressure and get points. If you haven't, um, but you might have some strong defensive type players um, and some quite good scoring players in and around the D at the other end, then you might play a little bit more of a forward press because you might be able to turn the ball over higher up and get scores, but your defenders in the back line can handle being exposed maybe 1v1 or with some cover, etc. So personnel is really important to assess the personnel you have in your squad before determining 
before determining what type of defensive structure you're going to put in place. The second one for me is principles. You have to embed your principles, however that looks like within your defensive structure. So whether that, whether you want to overload the midfield and keep um, spare people, a sweeper, a centre back, keep people free. For example, in that area, so you want to dominate middle of the pitch. Whether you want to ensure we get high pressure and we get pressure on the ball at a certain point, but every person's got to get pressure to the ball whether you have effective cover and people doing a job and a half, whatever your principles of play are within your philosophy and your framework, you have to make sure you hit them all the time. They've got to be key. So you're hitting them within training, the message is being reinforced and it's being linked into the game and specific game scenarios as well. And the third one for me is about adaptable. Don't be too rigid because there'll be times in games where you'll have to chase the game a little bit more. You might have to come out of your defensive structure. Your momentum might have swung towards you. So you might be able to press a little bit higher up the pitch or you might have to game manage and you might be getting beat a little bit by um, your position playing over the press because you're pressing high. So you might have to drop off and come up with a different solution. So you need to make sure all your players all your players and your teams are exposed to these different types of systems so that when you need to adapt, the message can get over, all the players can problem solve it themselves on the pitch. So personnel is important, principles of play is important, and being adaptable is important to me within setting up a strong defensive unit. The first scenario is the classic sweeper um, who drops back around the D, um, protects the full back line, uh, covers left and right, um, and sets up attacks. Uh, the second scenario here is the half forward line dropping back um, on the puck out um, to win breaks uh, and again to set up attacks. Um, midfielder drops back uh, around the opposition half forward line as well and they set up attacks into the two man full forward line. And the third one here is just um, uh, a wing forward dropping back uh, behind the centre back Corner forward then comes out and leaves space for, again, a two-man full forward line highlighted by, highlighted by uh, the red box. So um, if you're playing a sweeper, the sweeper probably has to be your, one of your best hurlers. They have to have a first-class um, touch, first-class strike, um, a bit like Tyg de Borca. Um, the, if you're dropping a wing forward back, um, they must work hard to get up and down the pitch, a bit like Dan McCormack from Tipperary. Um, and first and foremost, uh, whatever def defensive setup you use, it must be practiced uh, vigil vigilantly at training. Um, there's no point just going out saying, look, we're going to play this way this week. You know, it must be practiced in training, um, a plan A or a, a plan B effectively. Hi, so the question was, how do you set up a strong defensive unit? Um, well, it's very easy. Uh, I've got the tactic board here. It's very easy. You put 15 men behind the ball. So let's say you're managing the blue team. Um, you've got your traditional layout here, 15v15. So you put 15 men behind the ball if you want to have a really strong defensive unit. Uh, I will reference the, um, the Donegal Derry game today. Um, and basically, you put, if you're managing the blue team, you put all your blues in behind your own 65. So every single blue player is in behind the 65. So there's your strong defensive um, unit. And I was looking at the Derry Donegal game today, and make no mistake about it, Roy Gallagher puts 15 men behind the ball anytime uh, Donegal were in controlled possession. So let's say this green uh, marker here is the ball. So when Donegal, let's say Donegal the red team, when Donegal were moving up uh, the pitch. Um, Derry had no players in their own half, okay? So, completely blocked out the 65. Now, it's not as easy as that. It's not as easy as just putting 15 men uh, behind the ball. There's a couple of principles that have to come into play. Uh, so, principle number one is um, to protect the scoring zone. So, I'll just draw a line here to roughly where the scoring zone might be and it's all about protecting that scoring zone so any players opposition players that come inside the scoring zone need to be man marked okay any players as well 
uh, that are coming inside the zone need to be tracked and they need to be tracked early but it's not enough to just man mark them you have to make sure you do two things number one um, the tackles need to be aggressive uh, contact tackles need to be aggressive but perhaps more important than that uh, those tackles need to be disciplined tackles and uh, not giving away any freeze okay and we've seen that today with uh, with Derry they nearly beat Donegal uh, they had a good defensive setup, strong defensive setup, um, but you're protecting your scoring zone or the periphery of the scoring zone. Anyone who comes inside that scoring zone must be man marked and they must be tackled aggressively when they have the ball, but within the laws and rules of the game. Okay, now that's how you set up a strong defensive unit. So it's a different kind of fish now. If you want to transition, that might be a different question. Thank you.